This video will give a short walkthrough of using ChatGPT to understand some Java code relevant in a course I'm teaching, and then generate revised versions of that Java code using different variants of the Java programming model. So first, let's go ahead and ask the ChatGPT to analyze the following code. So we'll say, please explain what this code does. And let's tell it it's Java code, although it probably would figure that out by itself. So let's go ahead and paste the code in. This code was written by one of my students in response to a question I had for one of my programming assignments. And basically, let's see what ChatGPT understands this code to do. So you can see it understands that the code takes a list of string queries as input, and it returns a regular expression string as output. And then it goes ahead and gives a step-by-step -step breakdown of what the code does in a more intuitive English way. So you can see it converts the list of queries into a single string, and then it goes ahead and converts the entire converted string to lowercase. Then it goes ahead and replaces the left square bracket in the string with the opening portion of a regular expression, which will match any characters uh, zero or more times. And then it goes ahead and replaces each uh, comma followed by a space with the regular expression syntax, which will essentially ensure that each of those queries will be matched in an or-like regular expression format. And then finally, it goes ahead and it replaces the square bracket with the appropriate regular expression that will match any character zero or more times. And the nice thing here, it goes ahead and gives a uh, an example that generalizes this, and it says if the list of queries was foo bar baz, the resulting regular expression would essentially be something that matched foo bar and baz. So let's go ahead and ask it now to please rewrite this code using Java streams, because you can see before it was written in a more traditional object-oriented style, fluent interface style. So very quickly, the make regex function is rewritten using Java streams. You can see that ChatGPT spits out some very concise streams code that takes the original list of strings, turns it into a stream. Then it uses the map intermediate operation to quote any special characters within the, the original query for each of the different queries in that stream. And then it uses the collect terminal operation together with the joining collector to do something really interesting. And what was fun about this was I, I didn't really remember that there was this three parameter variant of joining that will go ahead and insert the dot star regular expression between each of the query strings. And then it'll prepend the open paren dot star at the beginning and the it'll prefix or sorry postfix or postpend <laughs> append the dot star close paren at the end and so you can see it then it goes ahead and explains exactly what it's doing and it explains how that three parameter version of collect uh, collector joining works and so you can see it then finishes up with a summary that this version is more concise and arguably easier to read and understand than the original version. And I, I agree with that because I tend to like using Java streams. Now let's ask it to do something else. Let's say, please rewrite this code using Java reduce instead of collect. So you can see it used collect before, and we want to see whether it can figure out how to automatically rewrite the code so it'll use the reduce terminal operation instead of the collect terminal operation. And voila, you can see in real time, ChatGPT is just going out and rewriting this code. And instead of using collect, it's using reduce. And the initial kind of seed value is the open paren dot star regular expression. And then it goes ahead and inserts the dot star between each of the regular expression queries. And then it ends up uh, basically appending dot star close paren at the end. And so I don't think this version is quite as elegant as the version that uses collect joining. But the cool part was that chat GPT understood enough of what was going on. And uh, so it, it uses this other variant. And it also gives a little editorial comment at the end. This version of the function uses reduce to build the final regular expression string in a more functional style than the previous versions. It may be more functional. I also think it's less understandable. But uh, the point is that it can do that conversion automatically. So I thought this was a particularly interesting way of using ChatGPT. And for those of you out there who might not have 
the earlier versions of Java, or sorry, the later versions of Java, let's see if we can tell it to generate something using uh, the more traditional versions of Java, perhaps, for example, using a string builder. So let's say, please, please rewrite this code using string builder and object oriented programming instead of Java streams. And so we'll see whether it's smart enough to go back and do a different approach. And this, of course, might be something that would be useful if you were stuck with using an older version of Java that didn't support Java 8 so or later. So you can see here it goes ahead and generates the same code or the same behavior using the classic form with string builder and a for each loop rather than the stream and append and uh, to string and so on and so forth. I personally would never want to read code like this uh, if I could avoid it. I much prefer the streams model. But what's cool is the ability of ChatGPT to just go ahead and convert between these different programming paradigms seamlessly. And we'll see what it says at the end, whether it gives a, uh, a uh, summary of things. And it does, in fact, say it gives the same results, but it uses a more traditional object-oriented approach instead of Java streams. And let's ask it, um, please explain the pros and cons of each model, of each programming model. I like to be polite when I talk to ChatGPT. It probably makes no difference whatsoever, but it makes me feel good. So you can see it's kind of talking about uh, different ways of doing the programming with different pros and cons. And you can see now it's going to go ahead and give you a summary of all the different approaches. And uh, I think that's quite fascinating. I'm, I'm going to uh, just let it play out because what the heck, why not? This would also be fun if you were teaching a course and you wanted students to be able to go off and kind of analyze the, the pros and cons. The downside, of course, is that now that we have a tool like ChatGPT, being able to ask these kinds of questions in, an, in a quiz or an exam that's online becomes somewhat problematic because it's all too easy for people to go and have ChatGPT give you the answers instead of having to remember those things. So you can see here it, it goes ahead and gives the pros and cons of each approaches. Uh, just for kicks, let's see if we can ask it to do a reactive programming implementation and uh, we'll see if it can do the same approach. Please rewrite the uh, make regex method using Rx Java and reactive programming. See if it's smart enough to do that. Um, that approach will, well, I'll just be curious to see what it does, whether it's able to do that or not. That may be something that's uh, outside of its grasp. You can see it sitting there thinking and may not uh, be as familiar. The, one of the other interesting things about ChatGPT is that it's going to work better on models and languages and styles where there's lots of information available on the web. So for example, object-oriented Java undoubtedly has lots of good examples. Functional Java has lots of good examples. And let's see whether or not it's got enough knowledge to do the correct implementation using Rx Java. So here it goes. It took a little bit of a while, a little bit longer to think about how to come up with a solution using the word think loosely, uh, of course. And you can see already it's it's figured out how to return a single, which is an Rx Java reactive type. And it's figured out how to use the from observables factory method to convert the list of queries into an observable. And there it goes. It's going to go ahead and use the Rx Java reduce technique in order to to create the result. And let's see if it um, see if it can do all this stuff. Um, okay, so it uses reduce and then it takes the result of the reduction and it uses map to wrap the open pren dot star followed by the regex that was returned by reduce followed by the dot star close paren. And uh, that does indeed appear to be correct code. It's, it's not necessarily as concise as the code we saw for Java streams, which I think the one using collect is probably the most concise one, but it does appear to be correct. Uh, and it, again, it may not be the kind of thing a programmer might do uh, if they were very fluent with Rx Java, but it certainly was amazing at its ability to be able to convert between all these different paradigms automatically 
and also provide a nice explanation of what it's doing. So right here, it's kind of spitting out the results, explaining how it made the choices. And uh, I think, again, it's interesting that it took it a little bit longer to figure this out, but it certainly took it a heck of a lot less time than it would probably have taken a uh, novice programmer who didn't really have all the various best practices and APIs of, of RxJava memorized in order to be able to produce that output. So once again, kind of demonstrating the amazing ability of ChatGPT to create content from prompts and how it can switch between paradigms very rapidly. So let's see when it's all done spitting out an explanation of the code, whether it, uh, it gives a little summary of what it's done. I think it's also interesting to note how the descriptions are all valid English. They're, they're easy to read. They're pithy and concise and something that uh, pretty much uh, anybody, I think, could understand if they were willing to spend time learning how to do programming with, with Java. And uh, let's see what it says. So it uses a more reactive programming model with RxJava. And that's correct. It allows us to express the computation in a more declarative and expressive way. Uh, and that's a little bit perhaps hyperbole because I think the Java Streams version was also very declarative and expressive. But it is true that eliminating the need to use explicit loops and conditionals is probably a win. And uh, it also makes the point that you can take advantage of other features of RxJava, like back pressure, although that's a little bit outside the scope of this example, to handle large amounts of data. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, but I hope this has given you some ideas of how you can use ChatGPT to both understand code as well as to generate code with different programming paradigms without very much effort on your part.